my name is Natasha and I'm joining you on behalf of the Saskatoon Public Library from my home which is located on Tree 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis. And I'm joining you for another sustainable YXE video and this video's topic is going to be be a good source. Um, so as always there's a whole list of resources I'd love to share with you on this topic uh, but I'll try to be brief and I'll try to include things for you to look at yourself, either in the text of this video as a caption or in the text of the post that goes with it. Um, so yeah, be a good source. It's really important that we talk about climate change. We don't just pretend it isn't happening or shy away from conversations that we think might be controversial or difficult. Um, there's actually something called a false consensus where the less people talk about something, the more they believe that there's actually consensus either for or against it. And that happens a lot with climate change. We think that a lot more people are against or don't believe in climate change um, than is actually true. And that can change how we talk about it and how we actually act in regards to climate change. So it's really important that we share what we know, especially when we have passion. Um, but I know from personal experience that can be really um, intimidating and that's coming from me and I have formal education in sustainability. So I, I totally get it. It's hard. It's challenging. You don't want to upset people, but climate change shouldn't be political. It shouldn't be this polarized thing. Um, it's factual. It's well-researched and we have a lot of good resources that we could be sharing. So basically when you want to share something about climate change, I have just a few tips for you. Um, share the actual link to the article, that way the person can read it themselves and look into it in the ways that I'm going to suggest that you do first um, and make sure that you're not just giving them your opinion. So say, this is um, a really cool article I just read. I like it because uh, I checked the author and I know that they're an expert in the field. I've read their, their work on this or I like it because it includes the full report so you could read more about the data on the subject or I like it because I recognize the new source and I find it trustworthy. And then put the link, say your opinion about it. You can do a brief summary if you want, but always include the link to the source that you're sharing. I find this is really helpful. It allows the individual you're talking to to not feel um, like you're just pushing an opinion on them and they can take their time and look at it later. They're not forced to engage and maybe have it turn into an argument for no reason right then and there. So it's something pretty casual you can do. Um, another thing that we're really lucky to have in this day and age is multiple different paid or free software for making um, complex science information really accessible. Uh, the term I've often used for this is um, knowledge mobilization. So it's making things that we've learned, especially as scientists, if we've researched it, getting that information that's really valuable um, out to the masses and out to people in ways that they can actually use and understand. And a really good tool for this is actually the free software Canva because you can make really um, stunning, crisp, clear visual infographics or even images, or even um, things to share on social media. And because of how versatile it is, I find this is a very good tool um, for science communicators, which can be you, can be anybody um, who is sharing what they know and are passionate about in regards to sustainability, is that you can put in images and um, information and text about things that are important to you. Maybe it's a, a local zero waste event. Maybe it's just, um, you know, some climate change facts that you want to share on your own social media. And then you can add at the bottom a little list of resources. That way, again, the individual who gets that information from you can go check it themselves. And I think this is just such a crucial step. Um, and it gives you kind of more, um, encouragement yourself to make sure that the sources you're including are being uh, represented correctly. It reminds you to make sure that you're not infusing or adding or embellishing more of your opinion, that you're actually representing those links that you're adding. And it also encourages um, you and those you're sharing it with to remember to do their own research because this is really important. So I'm going to share uh, a picture here up on the screen and this is from the IFLA, which is the International Federation of Libraries. And they have released two infographics um, about spotting fake news or uh, misinformation. So I'm going to put up 
an image. They have one for COVID and one for general misinformation. I'm going to put the, up the one about general misinformation and um, share it with you. And these are really good tips um, and things to watch out for when you're reading your own um, news articles or research before you share it with somebody else. Always make sure that what you're reading is un as unbiased as possible and, and make sure that you're aware of what bias you are holding yourself. It's really hard to break free of confirmation bias in today's day and age and what confirmation bias is is when we actively seek out information or news articles that reinforce what we already believe. So we kind of cherry pick and we grab just certain data or certain news articles that say what we want to hear and uh, share those instead. And the reason why that's harder to avoid these days is because a lot of our social media um, is actually designed to use algorithms that give you more of what you like. So the more you read one topic, or one author or search one thing, the more you get ads and news and other things suggested that reinforce that same viewpoint. So it's really hard to get kind of stuck in a bubble. So I do encourage that you search out various different news outlets, um, try to be broad and open, and mostly just be really aware of your own feelings and emotions when you come to an article and be critical of yourself and the information. So if a source is mentioned, I want you to look at the person's name and if it's included, which it should be if it's a reliable news source, um, their title. So why is this person being quoted? Do they have expertise? Were they a witness to an event? Um, what makes them reliable? And what makes the author of the whole thing reliable? Are they giving you information that is factual? Um, are they well known for this? Or do they only publish articles on a certain subject? And are you noticing certain words in their articles that are either emotionally charged or openly biased? So this gives you a good idea that maybe the piece you're reading is an opinion piece rather than an actual news coverage story. So if you are noticing a lot of words like, um, words that are over, overly expressive or colorful, you have a good indication that something is um, being written with an incredibly um, biased slant to it. And uh, another thing you can do is if you aren't an expert on a topic yourself, uh, you can look up the thing that you're researching in either a general encyclopedia, there's tons online, you can ask a librarian, you can ask a friend, you can um, research the topic and see which other news places are covering it. Make sure the information is the same in these different places and there isn't a glaring difference. And you can also check any images by doing reverse searches and make sure that it's being used within context. They're not reusing an old image to misrepresent something or an altered image to misrepresent something. Uh, right when you open an article, usually you can tell a lot um, from the, the headline itself. If it says opinion at the beginning, then you know it's someone just writing um, based on their own opinion. But sometimes opinion pieces don't include this, um, but often they'll include a person's name um, in large print. This tells you it's also likely an opinion piece. And if that's the case, before you read it, research that individual. Do they have any, um, any degrees, any accreditation, any association with large organizations um, and where do these fall? Are these biased? Check the, the newspaper, the printer, the publisher, the editor. Are they biased or related to any large groups? Um, and check the mission statement for the website or news, or news agency because they'll often tell you right off the bat if they are only covering certain types of news. Um, and again, you can tell just based on the language that is or isn't used whether or not this is something that is biased. So before you share something, make sure that you go through that checklist yourself, check the source, um, check how recently it was written, is it still still relevant? Uh, is it breaking news? In which case you might wanna hold off on sharing it because things change um, and sometimes uh, as the story is still developing, there'll be, um, there'll be some errors that get corrected later. Uh, is it being covered by more than one news, news agency? And are the people and 
things being referenced or cited relevant and reliable should they be included. So those are all really good things you can do before you share a news source um, and to find out whether or not you think it's real. And there are a bunch of different websites that you can go through and check and go through these steps again, or even play games. Like there's especially ones for younger kids through like media sense organizations that will let you play a game to see if you can spot actual fake news stories and give you some tips on that. Uh, a really good website that you can check out for that is actually just called spotfakenews.ca and it goes through the SPOT acronym, which is, is the source credible? P, perspective, is it biased? O, other, are other sources reporting the same story? And T, is it timely? Is it relevant? So it goes through these tips and then it has a bunch of links to other website like the Media Smarts, which is a Canadian center for digital literacy, which has again a lot of games and resources for uh, school aged children and older to teach them about uh, recognizing good sources. And it is really important to talk to kids about this, uh, but it's really important for adults too. A lot of people don't check sources of information before they share it, which is another really good thing to be aware of if you're on social media, not to just share a Facebook post or Twitter um, or a tweet or anything like that without having verified it first because you can't guarantee that the person who has shared something, even if it's someone that you know, you might instinctively trust them because they're familiar to you, but you should still be checking the actual source that they are citing and make sure that you aren't then spreading fake news by accident. So when it comes to talking about climate change specifically, um, it's kind of this weird thing that's happened where it's become political or uh, kind of identity based. Like there's different groups that kind of fall on one side or the other of the climate change debate, which I don't like saying because it's not a debate. The science is settled. Um, but if you're interested to know why that is, I found this really good resources through this good resource through the library. Um, and it's called Don't Even Think About It, Why Our Brains Are Wired to Ignore Climate Change by George Marshall. So this book was written a few years ago. It's not incredibly updated. I think there might be an updated version. Um, but the one I have here that I was able to get was published in 2014. But the reason why I think this is important for anyone who wants to start talking more about climate change uh, why it's important for those people is because the author is a good source. They are an expert in the field um, and that's easy to check. And because the book itself goes through the research process, so we follow the author as he goes through and talks to various people, groups, um, and researchers that fall on all degrees of the spectrum from climate change denial um, to actual scientists. And it talks about the barriers, beliefs, and research that those individuals do. And it gets into the psychology of why climate change is tricky to talk about um, and why people on either side of that spectrum kind of use similar language and think that what they're saying means something different. Like um, both sides will say things like, well, I do my own research. Um, so it talks about that and it's very well researched. So you can go in and verify and any person that has mentioned um, it ex explains why they are mentioned, uh, how they're relevant, their kind of background and expertise. And of course, um, any researchers that are mentioned, it does the same. And it has um, kind of more places you can look for more information to actually read more about their own research. So really well written, gets into the psychology, confirmation biases, logical fallacies, different things that make communicating and discussing climate change challenging and it, a lot of it has to do with um, social behavior and psychology uh, for human beings and um, there's some very interesting parallels with talking about um, the pandemic as well so that's a very um, kind of relevant read for today for multiple reasons i highly recommend you read this um, and again if you're sharing information with a friend please do link to the article sure give your impression and your opinion of that article but say this is why I think this is reliable and this is why I think about it. Please read for yourself if you want. And on that same note, if you're wanting to give them a book to read, that's a good primer on um, the direct impacts that climate change is ha happening. That is the direct impact that climate change is ha 
being today. Um, I would recommend this book. It's The Story of More. And fortunately, this one is very recent. It was published in 2020. And it was published, I'm um, sorry, the author was Hope Yarin. And uh, so it's the story of more, how we got to climate change and where to go from here. And the reason why I'm recommending this as a climate change primer to maybe share with people who aren't that well versed on climate change and sustainability is because the author does a really good job of using a conversational style. So it doesn't require um, unnecessarily, doesn't require that you have a science background. It's easy for anyone to um, enjoy. It's well written. And it's really well researched again, so anything that's mentioned is backed up by the science and you can go check that science yourself if you want to. Um, and the other reason why I think it's a great read and a great primer, so a good introduction to climate change, is because the approach that was taken in the narrative is that um, Hope used to teach a class on climate change, so what she does is she presents the information and the changes that have happened just during her own lifetime, so it's really... Um, powerful to see how much has changed in one person's lifetime. Um, and it's a good reminder that climate change is having impacts on um, on the current generation. And not it's not something that will just affect our great grandchildren, it's happening now. Um, along the same lines, another thing you could recommend to friends for friends to watch is the David Attenborough um, special on Netflix, which does the same thing. It goes over the effects of climate change during his lifetime alone. Um, and again, is very, very powerful in, in showing the impact of climate change. So I hope that was clear. I felt like I went over stuff a bit, a bit quickly, but the takeaway is double check what you're sharing before you share it and make sure that you are being a good source and you aren't accidentally sharing fake news. And do talk about climate change. It's great to talk about. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.